Hey y'all, so I am back with another Watch Me Work and this week has been just super busy of nothing but fall sets. All chocolates, all browns, all these um, really rich warm colors and I've been loving it. Fall has to be one of my favorite seasons. Fall and then Christmas. Christmas is my all time favorite one because I just love that every single last client that comes that month is getting all the glitter, all the nail art. So it is definitely my favorite month of the year. So for this set, my client brought in a picture. I meant to tell her to send it to me and I forgot, but I'm gonna go and try and find it on Instagram because I think I remember who did it. And if I did, I will post their name in this video. So to start off, I've already got my tips on, did my prep, dehydrated and primed. So I'm starting on the pinky and I'm going to take a very wet clear bead and apply that from cuticle to tip. Now I'm doing a glass nail so anytime you're doing that you want to make sure you're working with wet beads. As soon as I have that down, I'm going to come right in and start applying my little leaves. Now, I'm not going to be putting anything but the leaves on here, so I'm not going to have a background. So I'm going to make sure that I apply my leaves to where you can see very little of her nail plate. So where her natural nail, her free edge meets the tip, you can obviously see that little well that's there. I don't want to see that. So I'm going to make sure that I put most of those leaves there and then I'm going to spread them out according to that. Now in my last video I mentioned when you're applying glitter, you don't want to just throw it on. You want to make sure that you're being very intentional about how you apply it. Well the same thing goes when you're doing nail art. Never just throw anything onto the nail. Make sure that you're putting it on there in a way that visually looks good. So once I have them all on there like I want, I'm going to come in and cap this. Now, just like with my first bead, I'm going to come in with a very, very wet bead. Not to where it's like running all over the place, but it's wet. So I'm going to apply that in the center of her nail. I'm going to walk it down just a little bit. And then I'm just going to point her finger down and allow that clear powder just to flow down. You want to touch this as least as possible and when doing this I always like to wet my brush also so you want to be putting more liquid onto the clear bead so there's no chance of air bubbles or little pockets getting into that now when it starts setting up that's when you can kind of start moving it if you need to so here you see me smoothing it out and making sure that the sides are clean but my first initial application I place it and just let it fall down So I'm going to do the same thing with the cuticle bead, but this one is not as wet as the other bead. So I'm going to place that, point her finger down, tuck it in, and then I'll just blend it through. Okay, so for my ring finger, I'm going to be doing a French, and I want this to be a really deep French. So when I place that bead at the center of the nail, I'm gonna start tucking those sides in right there. Normally, I would bring it down and then start tucking in the sides, but if you want it deep, that's where you start. You start right where you place the bead and tuck them in. So I'm just pointing that finger down and I'm making sure that I really pat that bead down. I do not want it to be thick here at all. Now I'm going to just start bringing in those sides. This is going to help me create that almond shape. That is the kind of shape that I look for when I'm doing a reverse bed. So once I have that done, I'm going to come in with my cuticle bead. Not a big bead, but a small bead enough to fit back there. And still having her finger pointed down, you do not want your bead to run into the back of the cuticle area. So that's why it's important to have the finger down, especially on this part. So then I just blended it through from right to center to the other side. And then I'm just going to make sure that my sides are clean. I'm gonna pat it flat and then make sure that it's smooth out. 
Okay, so moving on to the thumb, I'm going to be doing a ombre, and I'm going to start with Glam and Glitz Chestnut, and this is a very pretty color. It's from their blend collection, but let me tell y'all, I had a hard time using this color because it takes so long to set up and start to dry. I drained out my bead on my paper towel. I even have to wait for it to kind of set up. So I'm going to apply this, get it into the general shape that I want, and then I'm gonna leave it and come back to it and really smooth it out. So this is a powder that you really have to work. Most powders are smooth and they start drying fast, but some of them you have to work for it and you have to sacrifice that for the color. So I was fine with it. I just did what I needed to do. So for this finger, I'm going to be doing a acrylic marble and I've already laid down a clear thin base and now I'm coming in and I've double dipped into my white and into a caramel color. Well, it's not so much caramel, it's like a orange brownish kind of color. I don't know, but I mixed it myself, y'all. And I did it, um, I think last week. And since I mixed it, I have been using it so much. It came out so good. It is a bit patchy though. And when it's like that, you just have to kind of keep working it and then that color will kind of smooth itself out. So for my marble, like I said, I am working with very wet beads. So I'm gonna apply one color and then I'm gonna come right in with my next color and just swirl those together. Now you do notice how I'm pointing her finger down and that will allow the product to drip. So once I come in and I don't want it to drip, when I add my next bead, I'll point her finger up and that'll keep it from dripping down because you want to control your swirls. You don't want it just to fall down and then you already have it thick there and you can't build it up. And I find for acrylic marbles, you want to work in small sections. You don't want to do it or try to do it all at once. So take it one step at a time. Sometimes I'll start from the tip and I'll work my way up, but most times I like to start from the cuticle. Okay, so for the middle nail, this one is that self mix that I made and I'm just going to start at the center of the nail and work that down. This one is going to be a solid of this color. So I'm just going to apply this and I normally can apply it in two beads, but I did not pick up a big enough bead here and it was kind of sheer through the tip. So you will see me going in and adding a little bit more. Sometimes if I know that I'm going to layer something on top, then I'll let that little sheerness make it. I'll, I won't even worry about it. But since this is going to be just that solid color, I made sure that that color was full and opaque. So this is where I'm going to start trying to correct that sheerness. Um, like I said, normally I'll do two beads, but here you can see I'm not going by the cuticle. I'm going above where I already applied the first bead, and I'm going to walk that down and blend that through that first one just to try to cover up some of that sheerness. So if you make a mistake, you can always go in and fix it if you start out with, you know, minimal product. You know how they say you can always add, but you can never take away. So um, I was using a thin enough bead to where I can build it up. So now I'm coming in with my cuticle bead and I place my bead down, press it back, and I basically allow it to flow in the back of the cuticle area. So here I'm just tucking it back, making sure that I have it from sidewall to sidewall. I want it completely covered. And now I'm kind of just walking it down, being very gentle. And here I'm really patting it because it's starting to dry up on me. So I had a little too much. Now I'm coming back and blending it down. Now this is what I'm talking about, this little patchiness here. But I'm going to just keep working it, making sure that I'm wetting my brush and keeping it moist so I can really blend that color through. So anytime you know you're mixing your own colors, sometimes you can expect this. Um, I, I think it was one of the powders that I used in the mix. It was already a really um, powdery acrylic. So adding it to here, it was kind of, you know, giving me trouble. But 
like I said, you can always work it and fix it. So I still noticed some of that darn <laughs> sheerness right there. So I'm going to go in with one more small bead and blend that through. So coming back to the thumb for my little ombre, this is going to be a double ombre. So I'm coming in with that color and I'm going to place it, walk it down. Once it meets the first color, then that's where I start my blend. When you're doing um, double ombres, triple ombres, you have to be very gentle when it comes to your fade. You can't just place it and, you know, boom, blend through. I'm being very careful. So right there at that spot, when I get to it, that's where I start blending. If I have gotten some of that color onto my first color, I make sure I wipe that away and then I continue to blend. So it is all about placing, blending, keeping it tucked in. And for this ombre, I wanted my fade to be like super, super faded. I wanted you just to kind of see it light and then go dark so i was really working on my fade and that first color that light color i didn't want a lot of that to show so i wasn't worried about my darker color coming down more because i wanted that effect i only wanted you to see it go from light and then all the way to dark so i was being very um careful when it came to my blend and and really blending this out Okay, so I'm coming back to the pinky and I noticed some of those leaves were sticking out because I had already encapsulated it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those nippers and just nip off those little extra bits that are um, sticking out. Now when I come in and file this, I would have been able just to file those little bits off. But since these are kind of on the metallic side, when you file these, you would see that um, color change in the leaf. You would see the metallic coming through instead of the color. So I clipped that off, clipped it away, and then I went back and applied a very thin layer of clear. So I'm coming back to my French. I have already filed that French into shape. And then I went and applied that Glam and Glitz color at the tip. And like I said, I have to let that one dry make sure that it was patted down because you want right there by the tip you want it to be flat you never want it to get bulky on you so for this one i'm going to do the same thing like i did on the thumb i'm going to add my darker color i'm going to push it into that reverse nail bed and then i'm going to just blend it through the tip And I'm more concerned, like I said, about my blend because I want it to be a really good fade. So you see me pressing it back and then just working on the fade first. Now, after I get that done, I'll worry about my size after that. But my first priority was that blend. So now once I have that done, I'm going to come in and just add that little bit on the side that needs it. You can always split things up, y'all. It just makes it a whole lot easier. Now, if I was doing one color, I would add through the tip and just push that color all the way back. But if you find that you're having trouble with your Frenches, then do it like this. You know, split it up. Do your tip portion first and then come in and add those sides. Now, when I do French, as y'all know, I keep that nail bed clean because I'm not trying to go back and file it, okay? So I'm going to apply that color through. I'm going to make sure that I tuck it in and I'm going to go through and you'll see me just cleaning off that nail bed so everything is good to go and I can just cap it. So to finish my ombre, I'm coming in with that nude color and I'm going to start at the center of the nail. Now once I place that bead, I'm going to move it from sidewall to sidewall and then I'm going to make sure right there you see me flattening out the back of that bead. That's blending it through. If you don't do that, then you risk the chance of it not adhering properly to the nail and you can get you know, air pockets or even lifting right there. So you have to make sure that you blend every bead. So once I have that done, I just blended that bead through all the way down. Now here, I'm not too concerned about my blend at this point because I know I'm gonna come in with another bead, my cuticle bead. 
and that bead will blend everything through. It'll fill in any gaps and it'll just give me room to really bring that fade in. Okay, so I have my application done. I capped everything that needed to be capped and now I'm doing my finish filing. So I have already took my hand file and filed them into shape and now I'm coming in with my sanding band and I'm doing two things here. Right here you see me at the back of the nail flushing out the cuticle area. So that is the, one of the main things that I focus on when I have my e-file. And then when I have that done, I come through the rest of the body and I smooth that out. Okay, so finished filing done. Here are the nails after they have been freshly filed, got a nice coffin shape, and now we're gonna move into design. Now for my design, I'm not gonna do a whole lot. The picture had the French outline, so I'm just using a gold gel paint that I got from Amazon, and I'm also using a new liner brush that I got from Amazon, and surprisingly, I love it. <laughs> You know I've been using my Magpie and I kind of swear by that one, but this one I really have been enjoying since I've got it. It came in a set and I got the set for a 3D art brush, but I ended up trying this one one day and I really do love it. So I'm just going to outline that. I'm going to try to make it thin. You don't want it too thick. I think that's um, a mistake I, I was making when I used to do these outlines. It would be too thick. So I'm trying to keep it as thin as I can. So once I have that outline done, I'm going to go in and just add a few diamonds. And that is pretty much it for this set, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. This is just a really rich fall set. I hope you guys recreate it. If you do, don't forget to tag me. And thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, and if you're not subscribed, subscribe to your girl, okay? <laughs> and I will see y'all in another video. Bye.